ជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជ
you were trespasses for our transgression. We thank you, Lord, and we thank you for your love for us. And through this body, and we and you become one. We thank you, Jesus. All right, Jane Bisa. មានជាមណាអាចលៀងសម្អាតកំណត់ចាស់របស់មនុស្សរូបក៏ជីវិតចាស់របស់មនុស្សបានទេតែជាមរបស់ព្រះអង្គប្រសូរគ្រីស្
to put his arm around you and take your sickness because as we already have experienced he gave his body for your body he took your sickness and gave you perfect healing the last day of the feast of the tabernacles Jesus stood and cried let him come to me and drink he who believes in me he who believes in me out of his belly will flow rivers of living water Jesus is speaking prophetically he's speaking about something that's going to happen later the feast of the tabernacles the feast of the tabernacles took place six months before the crucifixion of Jesus this feast was in memory of the 40 year old journey through the wilderness are you with me you understand so far I apologize that I cannot speak in Cambodia <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could share in the laughter when I see your your children speaking their language and laughing and I see you with the joy of the Lord on your face. That's what, that grieves me. That that I cannot enter and share with you. But I see the joy in your faces. I see the love of Jesus in your smile. And I thank you. Thank you for it. Tents and little shelters uh, were built from branches. Okay, you the Feast of Tabernacle. How's the families uh, which came from all over Israel? These structures gave the feast their name the, the feast of the tabernacle, the feast of the tabernacle. Um, among the traditions the feast included a great water pouring ceremony this was to remind Israel of God's supernatural provision of water. He supernaturally provided three million people with water in, in a desert where there was no water for 40 years every day for 40 years would you call that a miracle? 
Would you say that's impossible? It's hard for us to imagine. God providing this entire city with water. In a desert. For 40 years. They had plenty of water. Not just for themselves. But for all of the sheep and all of the goats. It's not even counting that he fed them with manna. For 40 years. So they never hungered. And they never thirst. And this Feast of Tabernacles was to remind them of how God provided for them. And God wants you to know this morning that he's going to always provide. He didn't stop at 40 years. He continued to provide for them in the promised land and then give them victory over the enemy, over the giants. And he wants you to know that he will give you victory over the giants and the enemies in your own life. Psalm 63 says, My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land. Where there is no water. You could actually say that Cambodia is a dry and thirsty land. Cambodia is a dry and thirsty land. Because when, when the word of God speaks of water, it is speaking of the water of life. It is speaking of eternal life. Where there is no eternal life. Where there are hundreds of religion that have no life. What is the difference between the prophet Muhammad and the prophet Jesus? Muhammad is dead. Jesus is alive. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the water that we drink for 40 years. Jesus is the water that we drink all of our lives. Jesus is the provision for everything that we need. Think about what it is right now. What is it that you need more than anything? Is it a car? Is it a house? Is it a husband? <laughs> Is it a wife? <laughs> Is maybe you just need a friend? Amen. Maybe you need salvation. Maybe you need forgiveness of your sins this morning. Maybe, maybe you've never met Jesus. I want to introduce you to Jesus. Who 2,000 years ago died on a cross, overcame death and hell, rose from the grave, he rose from the grave, resurrected, and is alive today, and alive forevermore. And through him, you can have eternal life. Yourself. So Jesus meets all of your needs. And the Feast of the Tabernacles is in celebration of God's provision for his people. The priests had huge urns, and I mean... I, I visualize that these urns were this big, you know, like in the movie where they, where they have these great big pots, you know. And, and they, would take, they would take these big pots of water. 
They would put them on top step of the tabernacle. And they had many of these big urns full of water. And with all of the Israelites gathered below the temple, thousands of people, they would push the urns over and the water would splash all over the people. It was a very dramatic moment. Crashing down. Splash down. And the, the Israelites lifted up high praise to God. Praising Him for meeting their every need. While they were in the wilderness. Jesus also said, these signs will follow them that believe. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, they will not harm them. And they will lay hands on the sick. And they will recover. He didn't say a river of living water. He promised rivers of living water. Would be poured out on us just, just, like, just like the water was poured out on Israel. You might ask yourself, but when will this start? When will the rivers of living water? Pour out on me. Jesus said also, Behold, I send the promise of the Father. If you tarry in the city of Jerusalem, tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Peter explained the Holy Spirit language of God the language of tongues demonstrated at Pentecost brought acknowledgement by the crowd, the crowd of onlookers at Pentecost said these all do exalt the name of the Lord and the spirit of truth. Now what you're facing uh, what, what you're facing as a church I wait on the Holy Spirit here because God wants to show you something you might wonder how you will grow you, you wonder how you will reach the lost world that we see those the task seems so big it seems so impossible you need a miracle and what God is trying to show you through his word he is a miracle God he is the God of the impossible. 
He will use each and every one of you to reach someone for Jesus. You might say to yourself, well, who am I? I'm not like Pastor Helena. I'm not li- like Pierre, these are the only two people I know. <laughs> How can God use me? Each and every one of you is a member of the kingdom of God. And the king loves every one of you just as much as he loves me. You understand? And we all must depend on Jesus. We all must look to Him. When I was in school, in Bible school, some students got together and they decided to do what we call prophetic activation. It's, it's a time when you listen to God and when I say prophetic, in the word, it, it, it says of all things to seek to prophesy. How do you seek to prophesy? And so in the prophetic activation, we were seeking to know how to prophesy. And someone asked me at school, uh, why you don't think you're prophet, pro- prophetic? Or do, you, do you think you're prophetic? And so I'm going to ask you now. Are you prophetic? And I answer the question for you. I will answer the question. I will answer for you. You are prophetic. Because every one of you can hear from God. God is speaking to you even this morning. He is king of our kingdom. We are part of the kingdom of light. And he is love. And he loves you so much that he talks to you every day. And sometimes he talks to you personally. And sometimes he speaks to you so you can tell someone else a message. So you can tell someone else what God said. And that is prophesy. So we were going to activate prophetically. And we said, there were maybe maybe seven students in a circle in a living room. All of them come. You all of them sitting down. Okay. In a room. They were all praying in tongues. They were praying in tongues. The students. Okay. And you understand what tongues is? God is Let me say this real quick. God is spirit. Correct? God is spirit. 
Love is spirit. Because God is love. So God is invisible. Love is invisible. Everything, everything in the spirit realm is invisible. But it's as real as that, that which we see. Now, answer, think about this. I will make this real simple because the church has to understand. Do you think God speak English? You think God is white? You think God is American? Or you, think, you think he's from Singapore? Or Vietnam? You think he speak Cambodian? You, you think he speaks German? Of course he knows all the languages. Of course, he knows all the language perfectly, but he is still spirit. So what language do you think is the language of God? Spirit language. Spirit language. Of course. Then it's not optional that we speak in tongues or not. Look what tongues is, listen. You're praying a perfect prayer to an invisible God, an invisible prayer that you don't understand to an invisible God. Uh, a, a perfect prayer. In one accord, see, I can't speak Cambodian. Some of you may not speak English. But we can speak in the Spirit and be in one accord. Pray with me in the Spirit. All of you, pray with me. Right now, pray in the Spirit with me. You see the power? That we have. And we are one. We are one. In the spirit realm. That we cannot see, but it is real. So we were all praying in tongues in the circle. No, no, no. I, I'm telling the illustration. You can sit down. Sit down. I thought you were going to do it now. You said you were going to do it. Okay, we, we, let's, let's act like we're doing it. So what they did is they went around in the circle. <laughs> I love that. We went around the circle and they said, so Gary, what do you see in the spirit? You know, specific things. Well, I see, and all of a sudden, I saw this vision of this waterfall. It was a little taller than the wall. And water coming down, coming down, like the water coming down the steps of the temple. I, I, when I read this scripture, I thought, that's what I saw, that's what I saw. And I told them, I see the water. And so they say, okay, so they went on around the circle again. And they come back. And they come back to Gary again. And what else do you see, Gary? I'm still scratching my head. Gary, and then, then, then all of a sudden I saw myself and I was standing in the middle of the waterfall with the water washing around me. Now, understand, I'm not prophetic. I didn't know that I could prophesy. 
But God is showing me in my mind. In my mind, I'm seeing this picture. After scratching my head and not knowing anything I was doing, I see this picture. And then all of a sudden, the water, the water of the waterfall, is coming out of my stomach. And I saw hundreds of people in front of me. And the rivers of living water were flowing out. Onto you, the rivers of living water are flowing out of me. And, and this I know when you go out there in this world those same rivers will flow out of you hallelujah the rivers of living water in spirit and in truth as the worship leaders lead you you tell God you love him. Then to worship God in his own language. Do you want to walk in the Spirit? Tongues is not a toy. It, it is a power tool to get the work done. Yeah. And be, so I promised God, I said, God, when I opened my eyes in the morning, I, was, I would start praying. In when my eyes come open, what better way to get ready for the day? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Do you know what's going to happen today? No, but God does. We don't know what's going to, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but God, but God does. And the Holy Spirit then prays what you need to pray to get through that day. Before your, promise, before your feet hit the floor that you will pray in the Spirit. Do you know the Word of God says pray without ceasing? Can you do that in your language? No. I can't pray in my I can't pray in English without ceasing. Can I pray in tongues without ceasing? Yes, I can. That's, while you're doing while you're doing everything else, while you're doing everything else you're doing, you can pray in the spirit. So why? Why? Because we need power. We need power. We need the rivers of living water, the power of Jesus Christ, all of the Word of God. Let me share this. Do you love Jesus? I love. Let me show you something. The power that we need, the power this church needs, is the power of love. The power of God. Because I'm Gary, Gary, and he's God. And he's God. <laughs> I'm Gary, uh, he's God, and I'm, Gary, and I'm not. <laughs> so, <laughs> whose power we're going to grow the church with? The power of God. Let me show you something. Let me show you how important the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's more important than you, it's more important than you thought. Jesus said to Peter, he asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? And he asked us, <laughs> do you love me? And Peter, let me, let me, this is what you don't know about this 
question. Peter said twice, well, yes, Lord, I love you. Why, why did Jesus ask him three times? Well, maybe because Peter denied him three times. Maybe. But I think it's this. Peter, Peter answered, I feel you. Two times he said, I feel you. And the third time Peter said, I love the boy, Petro. You already know, Lord. And, and the Lord did know. Peter did not say, I agape you. ខ្ញុំអាកាពេលអ្នកខ្ញុំស្រឡាញ់អ្នកអាកាពេលមកណាក្តី and this is how you pray. Matthew 6. The 6th chapter. Or 6 verse. When you pray. Go into the closet. Close the door behind you. And what you speak to God in private. He's going to bless you in public. Saying about the presence of God. Why do you think he said close the door behind you? What? When you pray. Matthew 6, 6. Go into the closet and close the door. Because it's just you and him. He wants it to be just between you and him. And in that closet, you pray for that person. You pray for your family. You pray for your friend. And you thank God that their name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you raise your hands in private. And you cry hallelujah in private. You cry, thank you, Jesus, in private. All by yourself, you pray in tongues in private. You prophesy in private. You listen and hear from God in private. And you see yourself in that stream of water. You see yourself as I did. With water flowing out of your belly. And then you say, God says yes. And you say amen. His promises, his promises, the rivers of living water. And when you come out, you will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Can you the change people took at hand? Chma, can you go tao na? Tao ko klang a. Chma, I said after get out from the prayer room, a cat become a lion. Hallelujah. Ja, a way that God. Thank you so much for your message. This is what we want our church to be. It's a led by the Holy Spirit. Yung chong our church about yung kung dag dag prayer niyong bossot. 
bảo nét na âm bên bờ bảo sát tế cũng thả ốc nhâm sơn lạnh bảo ông nhâm chưa bảo ông nhâm trăng thua cây cao bảo ông ta ruồi tè ông nè ông nai tè ông nè tham một bộ tè chả chân dương trai ca bảo ông mà ăn miên bảo bây giờ bảo sát tế cùng trăng ăn than dù giang chén cả lá mau dễ ai phía xa dương ăn hay ăn miên tới một tia đấy trăng hổ bị một phở ấy phở ăn hay giang chén chọn nai chọn nai đi phía đây tai nó không đai bị nhiệt ở đây phía tây khu ra mà sát ta cả đập ta tôi giang sư nhưng quay buôn mang trăm mang của mỗi mang tới giang là hốt bọc tới giang kia cho nơi cửa đây hàng tập bồn có ăn tham mà ngày buôn mang ta có thua mấy tử có tham bảo xin gì quan phở phía xa cửa đây quan quan dễ ở đây ăn được tham là tới đuôi thì vẫn tai nó không đai bị nhiệt buôn mang giang sư luôn trong tình yêu thằng này ăn hợp đi tình yêu tài lòng sạ khi nhung nói như ai đã tham mang rộng mang Kurama satta kara pada baklan ku kurama pada itu kurama satta kara pada shiti kurama atir kurama satta kara. Kini yang tu time dong, perlu nyim je nak tua kah. Baju tua kah tam sa chim yang hot lah. Nak kuat nak pun pi ko ah pi dah nak to ah. Cakap tak ah te dah minyak nak ah te. Bicara yang terkabul.